Hi guys, here I'm going to show you how to prevent duplicate entries into a list in Excel. So let's say I am adding some values, OK, and maybe these are part numbers, and I do not want duplicates. Duplicate value, please enter a unique value, and it's not going to let me input 101 more than once. It's a pretty cool little trick, so let me show you how to do it. Before we start, check the video description and click the link to Teach Excel so you can download the files for the tutorial and follow along. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials. We're going to use a data validation for this, and the thing about data validation is you have to create a formula that will output either true or false. True, it's allowed in the cell. False, it's not allowed in the cell. So what we want to do for this is we're going to create, it's good practice, really the only way you should do it, create the formula here before we go to data validation. So I want to create a formula that will tell me if I have a value or how many times I have a value in a range. So we use count if for that. Pretty awesome. Let us select our range. I'm going to select a small range here. You can make it as big or as small as you want. Just make sure that your list will fit inside the range. And let's do a criteria. The criteria is going to be the very first cell in the list. Go like this. Now I can see how many times is this value 100 contained within this list? One time. If I, let me go ahead and clear data validation from this really quickly. Okay. If, and I'll show you how to do the data validation in a moment, don't worry. So if I go ahead and put 100 here now, I have two and again, three, and so on. Different number, doesn't increase the count. Now, to make this equal a true or a false, you must put a comparison operator after it. So equals less than, greater than, something like that. Here, we wanna make sure that it will equal one. Now, you could also do this as less than two. So I could do less than two, oops, less than two. That would output the correct number because when it goes into data validation, it's only going to output true if it's less than two. So perfect. But equals one is the one that's oftentimes used. So you'll see that in other people's workbooks because they've seen it online and so on. And there's a reason why this will work even though when I have so when I have one, it's good, but if I have none, it's not good. So why will it allow me to have any empty cells? Well, it's a little trick with data validation. So just know that technically, if you want it to be logically correct, you'd probably do less than two, but you will usually see it written as equals one. Now we have to do one more thing to make this work for the entire range. For this, the criteria range what you want to do is to select it and hit F4 to put dollar signs around it. What that means is that this range will never change. But you want to make sure that this one does not have dollar signs around it because we want it to change. So we want this count if to be relative to the current cell. That may sound a little confusing, but I'll show you what it means in a moment. So. First, let's go ahead and select this. I'm going to leave it in the cell, let's clear this. Now select the cells to which we'd like to apply data validation. And you can go to the data tab and this little data validation guy right here, or hit the keyboard shortcut, Alt D L. Now you'll normally be on the settings tab by default. So then we go under allow to custom and paste in our formula. Hit OK, and that's it. 100, good, 100 again, bad. So we can retry it. Or if you do another duplicate, hit cancel, it just deletes what's in there. So it's awesome. Now you have a list where there can be no duplicates. Now let's go here, go to data validation. Look how this is the formula that we entered, A2 to A6 then this right here is A2. But once we go to cell A3, it will say A3. A3. And once we go to A4, it will say the same thing. So because we did not put dollar signs around this, 
it is updating for every cell in the range. But since we put dollar signs around the range, that reference never updates. So that's why we had to make the formula that way for data validation. The other thing is, why does it work if there are blanks in the list? Well, it works because of this little checkbox, ignore blank. It's going to be checked by default because it makes your life easier because usually you're not going to run data validation on empty cells. You only want to run it on cells that someone has put data into. So the ignore blank is what's going to make it so that equals one in this formula works instead of less than two. And if we want to do a custom error message, custom alert, it's pretty cool. Just go to the error alert tab. And actually, let's make sure we go ahead and select everything for that. Alt D L error alert. We have three different styles. Pretty cool. Just three different icons. Let's go with standard stop. Duplicate value detected. Put a helpful error message or if it's a coworker, just something funny. Kind of nice sometimes. <laughs> uh, let's see. Excel has detected a duplicate value in your list. Please remove the duplicate value. Basically, put whatever you want here. But it's usually good to tell them what they did wrong. Hit OK. Now let's go ahead and try duplicate. Duplicate value detected. Excel has detected a duplicate value in your list. Please remove the duplicate value. That doesn't make too much sense. Please remove the duplicate value now because there's no OK button. But whatever, you can do whatever data validation error message that you want. And what I'm going to go ahead and do right now, just for reference, copy this dude. I'm going to put it over here. Oops. And I'm going to go with a less than two. OK. I like that one a little bit more, but it seems like everyone and their brother and their mother has adopted this version over here, which I think is OK. It's just logically seems a little bit annoying to me. Now, if you wanted, by the way, if you wanted to make sure that it worked for the whole column, maybe I'll do a third example. Let's just restart it. Selecting entire columns is awesome now. You don't have to worry about dollar signs. So your list goes up and down the whole column. And we do it like this. We can do equals one. This is perfect. If we copy it down, you will notice the range references still stay the same. And the criteria right here will update. So this way, you can actually get around using the dollar signs. But if you are in an older version of Excel, you cannot select entire columns. So oftentimes, you're not going to run into that anymore as long as you have Excel 2007 or later. But there are instances where people do have older versions, so you should just be aware of that. And while we're at it, I figure I'll go ahead and show you how to do an input message which is kind of a neat little thing for data validation. So let's go ahead and select this first cell in the list, Alt-DL, go to input message. It's pretty cool. You can see here that if you have this checked, it's gonna show when the cell is selected. Let's call this um, unique list of parts. Input part number here. Must contain only values. OK. Hit OK. Now, when we go to the cell, unique list of parts. Input part number here. Remember that the list must contain only unique values. So data validation is actually really, really cool. Because not only does it prevent the user from inputting the wrong data into a range, into a cell, into a worksheet. But it will also tell them what they did wrong if they input it. Or here, using this lovely little input message, will tell them what to do before they input it. So data validation is one of my favorite features in Excel. And the most important thing to remember is 
all you have to do is supply data validation with a formula here. Make sure that the formula evaluates to true or false. So we have the count if function right here, which counts how many entries are in a range. And then we use a comparison operator to compare it to whatever we want, some number, to output a true or a false. And then the data validation is going to take that true or false, and it's going to either allow the user to input data or prevent it. And remember, the reason that it equals one works in this case is because we have ignore blank checked. So it's going to be checked by default. Usually, you will want it to also remain checked. And here we're using custom. There are many different options for data validation, but custom is a little bit nicer in my opinion because I like to create nice, unique little formulas in the worksheet first to do exactly what I want. Then just paste your formula in here, hit OK, or also don't forget input message and error alert. And if you want to remove the data validation, you can select the cells that have it and just hit clear all. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial, and that's how you can prevent a user from inputting duplicate values into a range in Excel. I hope you liked the tutorial. If it was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials.